The Alpha Sessions. Hello and welcome to the Alpha Sessions. I'm Eliza May and we are joined today with an incredible artist who I'm very lucky to be friends with. Their name is Izzy Grace and they combine many different genres to create their own unique sound, which I personally love. But welcome, Izzy. How do you feel? I was going to say welcome. <laughs> I feel good. I feel good. I'm um, good. Yeah, doing all right. Doing all right. Oh, it's fabulous. Good to see you. Funny it's we, good to see you. Funny how we bump into places like this. I know. <laughs> we say this. We have been friends for many years yeah. now. <laughs> But obviously, I know a lot about you because we, we are good friends. Yes. <laughs> the people listening in may not know. So oh. could you give a little bit of a description about yeah. yourself, your music, and who you are as a person. Who I am as a person. Yeah. Well, that one's easier <laughs> than the music side. But yes, hi, I am Izzy Grays. I make indie pop music, basically. Um, it's really hard to actually define the <laughs> yeah, sound. Especially when you're using so many genres. That's it. I can't be stopped. Um, but yeah, I make music. I have been making music for quite, quite a long time. I am, as you can probably tell, a very chaotic person. And I ramble a lot. I love a voice note. Never on time. <laughs> an awful reply to text. That's sort of me as in a nutshell, really. Oh, yeah. yeah, I feel like that's accurate after yeah. knowing you. <laughs> and a vegan, got to tell the people, obviously. Oh, that's what they needed to know. <laughs> <laughs> so as an artist, I know that your sound has evolved so mm -hmm. much because you've been through so many different genres and stuff. And I know that you've settled sort of on indie pop as a collective. Yes. <laughs> but I know that you started off as with an electro pop sound. Yeah. And now it's a little bit further forward from that, I guess. You've yeah. evolved. How did your music start? How did it, how did that journey happen? How did that journey happen? Well, okay. So this is always an interesting question. Well, I started with electro pop mainly because that's what I had like access to. Um, so after uni, I had like a year out of music because I'm not gonna lie to you, you do it for three years, you hate it. So I was like, I never <laughs> want to do that again. Um, I should have listened to my mum. This is an awful <laughs> yeah. career choice. But I committed, clearly, and it happened to be locked down literally like a year or so after I went to uni and I had an awful breakup. And what do you do with your time when you've had an awful breakup and you're a musician, you write songs about it? So I spent most of my time during lockdown, which was like the prime heat wave. Like, I don't think we've seen a summer like it. And I spent most of it in the ground like a mole. <laughs> I just decided that's where I needed to be. And I recorded like loads of different songs, including like I would cover people's songs in my sort of like electro pop style. And I even did like live streams. I got really, really into live streams. Oh, there was nothing else time. I could do. Yes. <laughs> there was like one option and one option only. Can't do a gig. Let's do a live stream. And it was free. I should have really charged people. Like, I even know. if it was like a pound, I was like, please. <laughs> should have had like a donation link <laughs> yeah. at the bottom. <laughs> Fund the career. <laughs> and um, I would take like requests and stuff and I would trial out new songs. And it was mainly the reason I was doing like electro pop is like I said, it was like what I had access to. I learned how to mix and produce. Um, to an okay level, enough to be able to do my own music. I'd say you, you um, did pretty well. Yeah, the quality I, of these tracks are incredible, by the way. I take that, because <laughs> I honestly thought a toddler did them. Um, really, really, like, overthought it. But it was really, really fun, though, because I got to, like, expo ex explore, experiment, same word, um, with different sounds and things. So I'd use my voice to create, like, different synth lines and just really, really delve into the genre. And it wasn't until I moved to London, um, like, a year after lockdown, no, I think, yeah, it was pretty much a year yeah. after lockdown, around then. And I got a band at the end of that year, which really then made me sort of develop my sound into a more of an indie pop sound, which was, it's really nice, it's really fun. And it means I get to slightly try different genres, explore different stuff, write in a different style. Like yeah. when you write, when I wrote like electro pop, it was very standard, like the melodies, everything. Whereas this, I feel like it can be a little bit like, more fun with it. Yeah, you can of. be more playful when you, especially with live performances. Yeah, well. you can bend the melody a little bit more. Whereas if you're playing to a backing track, you're like, this is what you're getting. Oh yeah, you heard it on Spotify. Now you're hearing it again now. So. <laughs> the exact same way. But I might go flat at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got the auto tune. So. I love that. So, when you're performing with a band, have you got a specific favorite gig moment? Because I feel like performing on your own and then performing with a band is a completely different vibe. Yes. Oh, I've had quite a few. I'll give you two, I guess. I'll do one from like one of my recent ones and then it. with my band. Oh, sh let's do the band one first. Oh God, that's a really hard one. Why did I choose that? <laughs> um, probably, oh, can, I, can I give you two? You can. So the first of a gig we did together, 
like yeah. the, the whole band that was huge you supported me and it I was did. incredible I think that's been like a really big moment I watch those videos back like quite frequently as you should they're incredible <laughs> that gig was stunning like, look at me <laughs> <laughs> I have people who want to play my music um, <laughs> which was really 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 cool and I think about it a lot with like guitar solos key solos um, and a load of my friends like made it which was really really nice and then since then probably oh I'm trying to think there's been like a couple which have been really good I think when we did the B-side festival yeah. last year and this is going to seem really weird what's my favourite but we messed up a lot and I loved it <laughs> I love when gigs go wrong I just think it's so funny um, but we did a cover of Does Your Mother Know no was it Does Your Mother Know I wasn't there so I cannot no, tell you <laughs> I think it was that and I got the words wrong and I was singing the wrong verse and then someone who worked there gave me their phone to be like these are the lyrics and I was like I've already sung those parts and then I just <laughs> sang the wrong thing continuously again <laughs> and oh, I just wow. got really really into it and I kept being like time for the chorus let's go you know the words because I don't <laughs> and I had a great time I just thought it was really 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 funny they they ran over a bit so they had to be like you've got one more song and I was like let's do the cover not the smartest choice, but the best outcome. So it was hilarious. I had a great time. And then probably recently I did a gig by myself because I don't normally play guitar. It's like actually does deeply terrify me. <laughs> I'm not a guitarist. I don't play myself as a guitarist. I play the chords for the song to write them and that's as far as I normally go. Um, but I did a gig uh, a couple of weeks ago and I taught the the audience like a part of the song and I was so nervous I was like what if they don't sing it back what if they just stand there in silence that's the thing they all joined in and then even worse because it's like two two words and it repeats quite a bit it's it's the chorus basically and um I was like you just have to come at the end that's all you have to do but they joined in with every single like chorus and I the first time they did it I literally was like I'm gonna cry and I was like wait I didn't mean to say that like out loud (laughs) (laughs) but it was such a lovely gig and like everyone was so supportive we were waiting for the tube home and (laughs) one of the people there literally stopped me and was like, you did an amazing gig. And I was literally like, I don't know if you actually know me from the gig because you are just stopping me in, like stopping me in public, but <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. It was That's really so good. Nice. Yeah. I feel like there's no better feeling than when an audience interacts with like the parts you're teaching them. The amount of them. gigs you do and they're just like standing in silence at the back of the hall. Yeah, you're like, I do wonder like, why do people do that? Because do people go to gigs? <laughs> like, <laughs> you're there to have a good time How? and you're providing the good time. They are just wrong. <laughs> it's just as well. I know that there's such wholesome moments though. And I also loved going back to that full band gig as well. Mm-hmm. The energy in that room. It was insane, yeah. It was incredible because I obviously supported and I just did a lot of acoustic act. It was my first London gig. Oh, yeah. And you let me, jo- thankfully, let me join you. And I felt so at home and you made me feel so welcome. And then the energy your band brought, you I thought you'd been playing for years, honestly. We just had busy mates. It's probably because we're all gig. neurodiversion and... <laughs> That just works. <laughs> We're never on time, that. poorly organised, but when we do a gig, it's fun. <laughs> I love that. Good energy all around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that briefly we talked a little bit about your songs in general. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I personally think you choose very clever lyrics and stuff. And for me, I'm always inspired by people that have clever lyrics. What makes you choose the lyrics that you like? You write about like what what Ooh. themes, what lyrics? Okay. come to mind when you like first when I pen so and when paper? I write a song like what kind of what journey do I take myself yeah. on? Um, I don't know. Why I phrased it like that. <laughs> you said it better than me. Thank you. That's <laughs> because I'm a lyricist. <laughs> That's the sort of songs lyrics I would write now. Um, I don't know. So to be honest, with my old songs, I wasn't as clever. I think I tried to be, but because they. They were very, like, poppy and simple. I was like, we're just going to do an easy chorus, easy verse, a nice bridge, and we'll be fine. But, like, since sort of... Oh, my God, no, pre-lockdown to now, there's been, like, times where I've written songs where I'm like, these are really clever, which sounds like I'm, like, to my own horn. But they were... Actually, should, though. They were really good. Um, One of them I actually can't say, um, because it does have a swear word in it, but it's really (laughs) good. Um, But it was... When it comes to like lyrics, I try to take something, kind of put it in the most extreme way possible. Okay. I don't know, that, like I give myself more work, and then I narrow it down to what like the simplified version is. So yes. like I tend to be like, this is what I want to talk about. This is kind of like the gist of what it is. But how would I describe that like as simply as possible? Yeah. 
and then I just had some like more fun words in I and love I love that. a rhyme zone <laughs> <laughs> rhyme zone so um, <laughs> <saves us all. laughs> synonym all. one <laughs> excellent <laughs> but even with the song home for example I did yeah. it earlier there's a lyric in it, it's like I want to run away but not like buy a ticket that's like my favorite lyric ever because it's like the whole point of that was I want to go somewhere, but I don't want to like go on a holiday. I want to, it's more than a holiday. It's more like I want to like physically escape and yeah. be like in some world that doesn't have rules and regulations and rent and <laughs> things that cost money and a job. It's like, I don't want to just buy a ticket and go on a holiday. I don't want people to think like, oh, I want to run away. I want to like a trip to Marbella. Like, yeah. <laughs> I want to physically disappear for a bit. You just need that space yes. and time. And I kind of played on other songs that I've written because there's a bit where it's like, but I'm done without space because. <laughs> I like to intertwine. Um, one of my songs is actually I took some time to live amongst the stars in the sky. Yes. And I was like, well, I'm done with that now. I'm done with like even wanting to just get be in out space and like floating around. I just want to be like somewhere completely different. <laughs> so, no boundaries. <laughs> no new era boundaries. of Izzy Grace. Like, <laughs> I want to be living in a mushroom, guys. <laughs> That's what I want. I love how rogue that is. That is <laughs> yes. iconic. <laughs> I had a really like, really good way of putting it the other day and I've completely forgotten it. So we're just going to stick with that. I mean, if it comes back to you, let me know. I'll be <laughs> ready. Yeah, yeah. Halfway through a question, we need to know. <laughs> yeah. But that's sort of like, I just try and be as like clever as possible because I'm so, I love listening to clever lyrics. Like same as you, yeah. I love really clever lyrics. I'm like, oh, I really wish I'd write something like that. So I try and like just find the most extreme way of putting it and then narrowing it down to sort of like the simplest but coolest way. We're just paper people falling away from the good. We thought we'd stick together, but that's just not what we had to do. Just hope your journey's easy and life ahead treats you well. I'll see you sometime, somewhere, but only time will tell. But I don't need you in my shadow, and I don't need you holding my hand. It's hard enough to walk away, but I'll catch you further down the path that I Alpha sessions. I know you're into producing, and well, I say you've, you're into producing. You produced your I own have, music. I have produced. I've dabbled. <laughs> <laughs> I would say because I'm not a producer, and the production side of things is a little bit scary for me. What inspired you to start producing your own music? 
well, I used to identify as a woman. Oh. And there wasn't many women there you go. <laughs> who were doing things. Plus, it was very expensive. <laughs> That's so true. I feel like you hear a song on the radio and you're like, oh my God, this probably took like five minutes to write and they recorded it in one take mm, yeah. and then it's out. That's but... it. Because like, I think a lot of people, when I do write and release songs, when I did like the electro pop stuff, people were like, wow, this must have taken seconds. And I was like, <laughs> no. Really? It's like four months' work. <laughs> like, yeah. give that. Like, um, but I really got into it because I, during uni, I didn't feel like overly supported I went to a very small uni on the Isle of Wight and a lot of the people knew everyone and if they created groups or they did work together it was because they knew each other and they worked with each other and then I wrote a song during uni that Rooney? <laughs> Rewind. Um, Rewind. Um, <laughs> during uni that I released and there was a person on my course that I asked to produce it but I didn't like how they did it like in my head I thought they would actually like add stuff and develop it a little bit but obviously that's not what happened and I think it was more of a miscommunication so I was like I'm really sorry I'm just going to do it myself and I got to re-record a vocal that was very flat um (laughs) which was perfect and I got to I just had so much fun and like I added so many different vocal parts I added like backing vocals I learned how to like chop up the vocals so they do that like staticky kind of thing um technical term (laughs) and yeah, like since then I was like, this is really fun. I haven't done it since though because it's a lot of effort. Yeah. And now I've got Scott, so I'm like, Scott, here's a song. <laughs> Do what you want. <laughs> For those who don't know who Scott is as well. Oh, he's my bassist and my, I guess, producer. Yeah. <laughs> He did High Priestess, I did hoodies, and then I was like, you can take the reins, I've had enough, I'm tired. Because, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of work. I feel like if you're not directly into producing and, yeah. like, It was as soon as we added live drums, to be honest. Yeah. I was like, who wants to comp live drums? Not me. Oh, God, who wants to get them in time? <laughs> oh, no, it's really, it's cool to see wh- how you got into production, because, yeah, I feel like my yeah. experience was completely different, and I was really shielded from the production side of things. So to hear that you had, like, that enjoyment when you were producing, mm. even though it was a lot of work, that's so nice to hear. Yeah, it was really, really fun. I really yeah recommend it to people like all the time yeah like whatever you can get access to a lot of them have, you can get for free that's so not the tennis to an ad but yeah <laughs> <laughs> you should definitely do it <laughs> i love that so i'm gonna ask you about your song catalog a little bit because <laughs> you're like what are you gonna ask yeah i gave you topics and i'm, I'm nervous because i'm like i can't remember what they were <laughs> well i wanted to know what your favorite song you've ever written was and what's your least favorite song you've ever written oh because everyone always asks about the yes. favorite but no one no, really hears about the least no and i think that's such a good question i like i like that i love dissecting my own work um <laughs> Oh gosh, my favourite song I've ever written. Yeah, like come ever, released as well if, ever, it, if it makes it easier. Then oh gosh, so my favourite ever I've ever written is the one with the favourite line with the rude word in it that I can't say. <laughs> Does, can we have the name of the song? Uh, it's called Monocopsis. It's on. It's actually on SoundCloud. Um, and the word I <laughs> this is goes back to my like I need to find creative words. That, like <laughs> oh god, I sound so like cracky and different. Um, <laughs> But in the annoying way. <laughs> no, no, never annoying. <laughs> but no, so I, I really wanted like a find a word that describes that feeling out of place. So I really, I googled for like two hours trying to find like a word. I was oh like, my gosh. I was like, you know, when you go somewhere and you're so aware of like the differences, like whether that's financial, whether that's background, whether that's like sexuality, whether whatever it is, you're just so aware of like how you don't fit in so I was like googling it I was like what's a word that means this and then I found like a page which gave me like a million words that meant like different things there's so many words um which is overwhelming as a dyslexic person I was like (laughs) they need to stop (laughs) but there was one monocopsis which literally meant like feeling out of place wow um and the whole premise of the song that's why I love it so much is the the chorus no it's the pre-chorus is like they're all aware that we're not in the same tax bracket. It's literally the line. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> Cause like, I've never, like, been very wealthy. So I was like, the whole point of the song is, like, meeting people now. And, like, even during then, that are just so well off and, like, can just do whatever they want or they've got, like, that support and funding. I hear, like, I'm going to work my three jobs and yeah. hope for the best. You understand that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like another round. Like, yeah. It's another way of life. <laughs> yeah. But, like, the whole point of that. And then the, the bridge was pretty, pretty much, like, working working at this sort of party where everyone is just like I don't know how to phrase it like basically trying to find their way up the ladder by using everyone else and yeah. being all like like sucking up to everyone and you're just there like holding plates yeah you're just trying <laughs> in your the best corner. to get by yeah. <laughs> and yeah so that was that's probably my favourite song I've ever written and that's like, why like a very I love cool it. concept for a yeah, song yeah it's a really well. cool concept I just need to remember the chorus <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting to hear it released on Spotify. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm ready. I'm just going to take the SoundCloud one and just put it on. <laughs> like, that'll that's do it for me. Um, and then the least favourite. And the least favourite. Oh, that's 
a hard one. Sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No, there. I'm gonna have to do one. I think I'm gonna go with ones. One of the ones I've released as well. Ooh. Oh no, it's not out there anymore. Well, that's probably because it's your least favorite. Human. Yeah, I think that's my least favorite. I wrote it in uni, and it got produced and released by someone on my course all the year above because he had to do like a commercial. Pro- we did a commercial project where you got to take on whatever you wanted to do um, in the music industry, and he was sort of like a management kind of guy, and I released it with him. And I think the song was just full of like cliches. It was like, I'm not human. That was literally the first line of the chorus. Oh, wow. Um, I'm a puppet on a string. I was like, oh my God, who am I? <laughs> I mean, I do love that line. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I really yeah. spot that. <laughs> You're like, it's honest and real. But yeah, I just didn't like, I think it reminds me of too much as well. I think it's got so many layers to it emotionally that I'm like, no, wrong. Yeah. But I think it was just very, very, it could have been more, it could have been better than it was. And. But that's how it ended up, and I'm no huge fan of it. That's fair enough. I've, I feel like as well there should be less stigma about artists taking down their music as well. If they're not yes. happy with it, that should be fine. Yes. Well, I arguably took it down because it was released under his Ditto account, and now I can't get access to that, so I can't technically get my royalties for it. So oh, no. <laughs> it's just, like, just the money floating around in there. So, talking about your old stuff and moving on to the new stuff, mm-hmm. are you currently working on any new music? I know we heard a few new songs <laughs> earlier. Oh my goodness, <laughs> no, they were all, all new! All new. <laughs> uh, none, none released, because Ooh. I don't have more than 24 hours in a day. That's true. I was going to mention that celebrity, but I can't remember her name Molly now. May? Molly May. Molly May. Unlike Molly May, who has <laughs> an abundance of 24 hours in her one day. Um, <laughs> which I'm so jealous of. I know, but, share um, us all. <laughs> just got them all. But, um... Yeah, so I forgot the question immediately. <laughs> oh, my new songs, my new songs, yes. back on track. Um, but yeah, so I have got a lot of new songs. I'm currently, I've got two that are just weighing on my vocals, so i.e. they're waiting on me. Um, <laughs> and then they should be out there. One of the, the first song I did, the one, Paper People. Paper People. I was going to say Little Steps, that is the other song, and my brain can't <laughs> differentiate the two for some reason. But Paper People, that one's coming out, and that's one of my favourite songs I've probably ever written. Wow. It made Matthew, my keys player, and like closest friend, cry oh, when wow. I performed it to him he was like I was like listen to this song he's like no I'm coming home you need to sing that to me and I was just like oh god <laughs> I will be accepting tips um get the settle on like, <laughs> tap to play <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it as many times as you want um but he really really loves it it's one of his favorite songs and when I took it I was like we were looking for a new song with the band and he was like that's one that's the one you need to do that's the one you need to do and I was like okay fine let's do it it's one of the cutest songs and it sounds really cute it's not overly happy but it's like optimistic in a way it's like yeah. that sort of friendships that fizzle out and you know that it's okay that you've like parted ways but they've still got like a place in your heart and they you wish them well kind of thing yeah and then the other two that i performed are also new two of them are gonna be part of like a ep Ooh, that i'm doing exciting. and then the one i haven't didn't play is going to be like a full band piece as well as well oh my gosh as well as paper people so exciting I love that you're like thinking about acoustic stuff as well as full band stuff because it's nice to have that like differentiation and like some of them just have need that sound I think more than anything there's too much those three songs on the like acoustic EP are far too like emotional and like they mean a lot to me so I'm like they need to have that like care and attention yeah which I may or may not give them oh we will <laughs> we'll find, out find out when they're released <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you have a release date in mind at all or are you just going with the flow going with the flow fair enough yeah, it's, it's... you also run something called burnt toast presents I do which I'm a much. big fan of would you like to tell the people you're a huge fan because you're on the you were on the first lineup I was indeed you special treatment <laughs> um it's like some weird form of nepotism isn't it <laughs> <laughs> when you get your friends on stuff um <laughs> But yeah, so Burnt Toast Presents is like my little baby. <laughs> I can't put it any other way. Like, I adore, I'm going to say her. She feels very feminine. Mm-hmm. Um, but she's amazing. We basically host, oh, you probably don't know. I was going to say, I was going to start talking like you knew exactly what it was. Um, <laughs> I do, but the people you don't. Do. <laughs> so Burnt Toast Presents is a live music night and we raise money for different charities at every single gig and we support independent artists in the way they deserve to be supported. As you might have seen and you might know all about the people talking about the really, really bad promoters, especially in London. And myself being a musician wanted to stop that, like, happening, or happening a lot less. Because obviously you're still going to take a gig, a gig is a gig. And you don't always have the same opportunities as everyone. And (laughs) your hands are tied half the time. (laughs) So... When it comes to like putting burnt toast together, me and Phoebe like met. So 
I met Phoebe through Neve, my guitarist, um, because Phoebe is their partner, and we literally met for coffee, and we were like, wow, we need to change the world. (laughs) We sat down with a very small task (laughs) of changing the world. Minor. (laughs) Minor. I think anyone can do it. Of course. And um, so we, we sat down, we went for coffee, we, like, stumbled through a lot of different ideas, we kind of came to the gist of, like, we love charity work, we really, really love, like, giving back to people, especially like we're both from sort of different backgrounds but we've all had we both had like a lot of similar experiences in life and both struggled with our mental health and like being queer and just kind of existing in the general world so we were like something needs to be it needs to be more than a gig you need to be able to go there and like feel like really welcomed and safe you're not just going to watch live music you're going to like hear about the musicians you're here going there to support this charity you're going there to sort of like just escape from life um (laughs) it's a theme in mine but uh yeah so we basically the premise of burnt toast was to create music in a really 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 safe and welcoming environment but also support some incredible causes where are burnt toast gigs usually held at the moment because i know you said you were looking for yes a, a, so another venue we are a cat space in london bridge also has their own nights run by bb barry a uh, legend icon. and absolute icon adore bb barry um i was going to turn that into promo for her then but it's just <laughs> she's amazing but we are looking just because we are supporting a charity um called cards for bravery they reached out to us actually to the our last two charities of the year or well, two of our last three charities of the Ooh. year um teasers and one both reached out to us so which is really 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 exciting and that's what we want we want like charities to be able to come forward and be like yeah we really love what you do let's work together um rather than us like hunting down charities and then having them not reply to our emails i'm like let's let's make this as collaborative as possible two-way street exactly so they messaged us ages ago but because they're a disability charity cat space is downstairs so we're just looking to have a space that's you know, accessible yeah. and will be more appropriate for their needs. So we are at Cat Space and we will be at Cat Space for the majority of our gigs, but we will be changing our home for one night and one night only for oh, an amazing charity. Very exciting. So, I love that yeah. you planned this all out as well for the rest of the year. So oh gosh, I can't artists, not plan. <laughs> artists and just audience listeners that are interested in coming to more live music nights that support artists, where artists get paid fairly, yeah. and, um, <laughs> and also want to support charities and the incredible Burnt Toast mm-hmm. team, they should keep an eye out and follow Burnt Toast. Where can they find Burnt Toast? Oh, on all the internets. What's um, their social handle? Oh, Burnt Toast Presents is literally... Uh, no, that's the email with the Z. It is an S. <laughs> Phoebe got Burnt Toast Presents with an S. And then I can't remember what happened, but we couldn't get back into the email. And then she couldn't delete the email. Oh, no. So then we she managed to delete it, but we still couldn't get the handle. So we're Burnt Toast Presents <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> Ticket. I'll travel miles on a plane and it goes on me further. But I'm done without a space controlled by retrogrades. I've got too much on my plate. My stomach's full, but I still crave. Cause I wanna be alone. Don't leave a message at the trees flow past the skyline there's a world I just smile like behind the door pull the wool over my eyes in the darkness I see fine folk in here they seem quite nice I won't be by turn out the light cause I wanna be Leave a message at the top Rebuild my home Cause I wanna be, I wanna be alone Cause I wanna be
be at home Don't leave a message at the time Rebuild my home Cause I wanna be, I wanna be alone Feel the sun come closing I feel the sun against the skin See the sunrise through the trees I heard people The Alpha Sessions. I know that Burnt Toast obviously supports so many artists, and I mm-hmm. said that obviously you tailor those artists' artist lineups. You've also been curating a festival, a few festival lineups this year, haven't you? Yes. At Burnt Toast. <laughs> We've been so busy. <laughs> and this is only the first year. This is only the first year. Well, technically, it crosses into our second year's place part, but it happened like the, the initial true. like reaching out and planning and stuff. Is, was in our first, first year. year. But going Which back is, to the festivals, yeah, sorry, got what distracted. festivals So we are curated? supporting two festivals, as you said. The first one, the soonest festival we're supporting is Matchstick Festival. It's a fully independently run festival, which, like, their whole mission is to have an, like, almost entirely female lineup. Because, as we all know, festival lineups are very male heavy dominated. Yes. Okay. Heavy dominated. That is correct. Cool. <laughs> it didn't sound right. But so you you know how that works. Okay. And so Shannon and Tom who put it together have worked really hard on like finding like the sort of best people to support. Like they have been to Burnt Toast, Shannon performed, so that's yeah. how she knew how we ran. So she mess- messaged me and it kind of has been a whirlwind. <laughs> so we've got the lineup now, it's all like curated. They have two stages. Oh my gosh, incredible. Um, and my sort of like input, I help a lot with their social media, which I now officially run. I got tagged in one of their emails as a their social media manager and I felt like I was going up in the world. <laughs> you um, are. <laughs> it's like, wow, <laughs> this is it. But yeah, so they've got two stages. They'll also have a industry panel. Nice. So they'll have women from the music industry chatting about their experiences, their advice, like all things music industry and then they also have like food vendors and stuff like that but yes two stages and it's a little else's farm in kent which is literally so close to london i didn't even realize you hear kent i'm like that's miles away yeah but it's like half an hour on the train no way from like london bridge it's so accessible and they have like a mini bus slash coach that will just like pick people up and i think it's every Hour. I should know that because I made the post. Um, <laughs> but it hasn't gone out yet, so I haven't looked at it in a while. <laughs> but um, they, it's a really, really cool festival. So my who, Who's headlining as well? Who is headlining? Is someone big? <gasps> oh my gosh, Ellie Dixon. There you go. I knew it was someone incredibly big. I like gasped then because I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's Ellie Dixon. How incredible. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> but it's got really, really, it's got a really cool lineup of a lot of amazing independent artists, myself included. Oh, amazing. So I'm, <laughs> I feel like nepotism. Um, <laughs> But to be fair, I didn't expect to play. Like, I will happily say that. I didn't expect to play. I was really happy to just be involved in any way, shape or form. Yeah. But that's me. I can't say no to anything. So. <laughs> um, I love that. And then the second festival is B-Side. As I said earlier, I performed there. And they asked us to host a stage this that's year. Incredible. Which is really cool. So the acoustic stage at B-Side is a Burnt Toast present stage. And we got to pick eight of the artists. Wow. They offered to like let us pick all of them, but I was like, I don't really have the time. <laughs> we'll do we'll do fifty fifty split. You take eight, we'll take eight. But to be fair, when they gave us like the list of people they picked, it was so many people. I was like, oh my gosh, I would have picked them. <laughs> um, and there was 
hundreds of applicants so it was quite intense to go through but it's really 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 cool and exciting to be part of a festival especially because it's so close to where I live yeah and um weirdly it's made me very emotional um it just feels like quite cool to be able to like go to your hometown and be like I haven't lived here in years I've been living in London trying to make things happen and this is where like the crux of my like self-doubt comes from like a lot of people doubting you and things and I'm now going back and being like so I'm a musician (laughs) I run events and this is the stage (laughs) that we are hosting at a festival which is literally insane this is mad but it's, yeah it's you really put cool. so much hard work into it yeah and i feel like over the years because obviously i've watched this from the sidelines all happening not even sidelines <laughs> i'm like voice saying you 24 7 like this that is going true. wrong and i don't know what to do <laughs> but most of the time like you've got this and you're just asking for like a second pair of ears yes always um but yeah i feel like you've, done, you've worked so hard on matchstick and on um b-side as well it's great to see it come into fruition so exciting. i know it's so soon as well Oh, where, when is it and where is it? Tell the so, people. So, Matchstick, yeah, it's the 3rd of August. Yes. Little Elsa's Farm. It's a one-day festival and the tickets are still £15 at the moment. Oh, my for gosh. the whole Grab day. Them quick. Which is an amazing price yeah. for a festival. And then B-Side. And then B-Side is the August bank holiday, so the 24th and 25th. Uh, music all day for both days. I can't remember it's it off my head because the prices have just gone up because they've done that tiered pricing. Yeah. Um, but they're not bad prices. I think one of the tickets like 18 pounds so oh, that's pretty good still not especially bad. for a whole day of music because if you were to go to like i don't know reading festival for the day exactly. that would cost way more and yes. you're getting to see independent, independent artists, artists which and we love. even then like even if it's not it's like just a really nice day out it is. and um we are yeah we're really excited sorry I didn't want to tell you that. <laughs> i'm also really excited yeah <laughs> so in t- talking about festivals in general you said you were performing at matchstick are yes. there any other festivals you're personally performing at also, as well this summer also at peace <laughs> But then we're like that. besties now, so it's fine. Because um, it's really nice. Um, they applied to play, but they wanted us back from last year, which is really, really special. Oh. But I'm also performing at Guildfest, which Ooh. is a crazy one. I thought it was a scam. They <laughs> called me multiple times. I never answered because I thought I was being scammed. Oh my God. They kept leaving a voice message, but I couldn't hear it until like I sat with my mum and I was like, this number has called me more, more than once. I definitely know this number. And I was like, they've left a voice message. Let me listen to it. And they said their name and they said they were from Guildfest. And I was actually like, hmm, I don't trust this. <laughs> but I'm going to call them back. So I finally did. And they were like, hi, we've been trying to get a hold of you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry. I thought this was a scam. I bet they were like partially offended but like, also like oh wow we must be doing a good job yeah I was like I was about to block you for harassment like <laughs> I didn't know who you were I like I can I because I know when you apply to festivals you write like a list of who you apply to yes I do not have that level of organisation oh, no. <laughs> so I forgot and I just because of like where I'm at I'm, and so busy I don't think I'm going to get as of like the opportunities that I do get so I didn't believe it so I just kept being like nah that's not right <laughs> And then they, so it's even funny because an artist actually dropped out due to pregnancy. Oh, no. And they're like, we now have a slot, but we really wanted you. Would you like to like come and perform? And I was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> if I can, <laughs> if you'll have me. Only if. Um, so I'm performing on the Sunday, the same day as Sam Ryder, oh, which my is gosh. crazy. We haven't practiced once, but I'm just You've hoping we'll just like channel the songs. <laughs> like <laughs> we will just have done it enough that we just know. Yeah. But, we always have a really, really like fun gig, so I think even if we made mistakes, it would be really fun. It'll be fine. We've <laughs> we got this. You're professionals. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So is it though, just those festivals this year? Because that's a big achievement I think to get those. Yes. Yeah, it's just those three. Incredible. Yeah, I've that's got, like, amazing. Got like other gigs, but overall, those are the festivals, which is really cool. Oh, amazing! I'm so excited to see like your musical journey continue to flourish this year. Stop so you, <laughs> me. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I just love everything you do. Oh, thank you so so much for joining us as well today. Anytime. Before we go, what is your social handles? I can't remember if you said them earlier. So no, say, I did burnt definitely toast. say them. Let's do them twice. Uh, burnt toast presents yes it is spelt the entire way that it should be spelt there is no, no weird Z. spelling in there there's no <laughs> Z's and there's no too many I's um, and where can they find and your and then music? me myself uh, it's Izzy Grace I double Z double I grab a pen I <laughs> double Z double I Grace, Grace underscore Hun thank you for doing that with me <laughs> I was like I don't know if she'll get if they'll remember I don't know if she'll remember I wasn't going to make it that far. <laughs> but yes, I'm Izzy Grace underscore Han on all socials and then like music and stuff. You can find me. Yeah. 
arguably, if you just type in that spelling of Izzy, you will find me. You don't actually need the rest of it, <laughs> as I found out on far too many occasions. Oh, wow. <laughs> they're, like, can, they're like, can you, can I follow your Instagram? And I start typing it in. I'm like, it's just that. that's me. <laughs> that, that's me. I am the one at the top. Amazing. <laughs> and... W- where can the listeners find your music as well? Is it on Spotify? It's on Spotify. It? Oh, it's, on, it's probably all of them. I don't use Apple Music. It probably um, is. On I know there. it's on Amazon Music because my dad buys it from there too. <laughs> as he should. <laughs> and then, yes, definitely Spotify, Amazon, Tweezer, I think that's one. Deezer. Deezer. Tweezer. <laughs> I'm just like, so you can't come for me. <laughs> that's made my day. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you for bringing we, right at the, the end. good vibes. <laughs> we Make do. sure you check out Izzy's music. Izzy's latest song as well is called High Priestess. High Priestess. And that is my favourite, so, so you have to stream well. it. You have to stream it, because I don't know when the next ones will be out, so you've got to <laughs> go through the catalogue first. There you go. Keep up to date with the backlog, and then yes. <laughs> the new stuff will come very soon. Sit in silence The TV blaring loudly Of a show that I don't watch It's nice Not uncomfortable We just don't have a single thing to say But I know I'm leaving a place I call home And I know that you sad and watch me go to my heart mm-hmm. Sweets Sit on the passenger seat No look in your eye but Boxes from the car to a place I'll start anew And I know I'm here in a place I call home And I know that you're sad and watch me grow Even miles apart Are you close to my heart? And I know I'm here in a place I call home And I know that you're sad and watch me grow Even miles apart Are you close to my heart? Walks down shore and by the sea Skipping stones at the edge of the beach The lane I drive away from my party days The tears you saw and the ones you say The snack of biscuits but you swear it's only two The kitchen music that you let us choose And I promised all the money I will pay back But I know you're both proud even when you don't say that but I know I'm here in a place I call home And I know that you sound and watch me go Even miles apart Now you close to my heart I'm here in a place I call home